Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romney. Welcome back to this YouTube channel where we take on narcissism and narcissistic relationships and healing from narcissistic relationships. So, not everyone leaves narcissistic relationships. None of us have the luxury of getting out of all of them. But let's say you get out of one of these, okay? Or you just put up really, really good boundaries. Maybe not full no contact, maybe not ended it, but like you're super disengaged. Something I'm hearing from a lot of survivors is after they get out of the narcissistic relationships, they say, I feel like I don't know who I am anymore. So let's try it like this. I'm going to put this as a conjecture to you. Imagine you lived amongst a group of really, really tall people and you're of average height. I don't know, 5'5", five, 5'6", five, 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 se five, seven, eight, five, eight, if you're a guy. Let's say everyone around you was six foot three or taller. So over time, your identity became a, I'm a sort of smaller statured person. You'd automatically stand in the front of group pictures, maybe even ask people to reach stuff for you. Then let's say you moved out of this house of tall folks and you start living with people with a range of heights and you're no, no longer the smallest one in the group. That's going to be a shift. Or more realistic examples, those of you who might have been in a really, really competitive, intense job, or you started working out with people who were elite athletes, or you went to one of those really, really competitive colleges, and your identity as being really good at something got a little crongled, and you thought, mm, maybe I'm not as good as I thought. Context matters. Our identity, our sense of who we are, is very much shaped by the context. Our identity might be like, well, I'm actually not that tall when we live with the really tall people, pull us away from the tall people and maybe put us with a mix of heights. You're like, oh, I'm kind of average height. You might think like you're actually really good as a student, as an athlete, as a person in a given job, but then you're working with the best and most driven, the best of the best, and you're thinking, oh, okay, your identity shifts from like, I thought I was really great at this, not as good as I thought. Context can shape identity, even though identity feels like something very stable. In a narcissistic relationship, identity is also very much shaped by the toxic stuff that happens and things that people in these relationships often feel like, I'm too needy, I ask for too much, I'm always doing the wrong thing, I'm socially unskilled, I'm not that smart, I'm not good enough. So think about how your identity was shaped by being in a narcissistic relationship. And while this is very profound when you're growing up, your identities can get formed and reformed by being in a narcissistic relationship in adulthood. You may be confident and well put together and then get into an, an adult narcissistic relationship and then recognize that your identity slides into some really sort of distorted patterns. But that narcissistic relationship kind of becomes a backdrop for your identity especially when it's an important or significant relationship. And even if it is an identity that doesn't feel good, things like I'm not good enough, I'm mediocre, I'm selfish, whatever it is, the narcissistic relationship is almost like a pathological scaffold that keeps that identity in place. Then what if the relationship does end or you do step away from it? What happens then? I would love to sit here and tell you that it's all moonbeams and rainbows and your identity just pops back into a happy place like just boom, just put some water on it and it grows and you're confident and you have an accurate self-appraisal and all of that good stuff. But that's not how it unfolds. Most people, when their narcissistic relationship ends, find themselves sort of banging around a little bit without the dysfunctional scaffold of the narcissistic person, who are you? Their voices get into your head. You still think of yourself as how they talked about you, but without them being in your life, you might actually now have some competing healthy voices trickling in, but that doesn't mean we just pop out of it and that out of that negative identity. And sometimes that sort of lost-ish feeling after one of these relationships ends can even leave you wondering if you were wrong to step away and wonder who you are in the absence of a new identity 
our tendency is to sort of hold on to the one we had, and that's not doing you any favors. This experience of sort of, sort of feeling like a lost identity outside of the narcissistic relationship, remember that, that narcissistic relationships keep us really busy. There's something to do. We have to try to be enough. We have to anticipate their needs. We have to walk on eggshells. We have to ride the roller coaster. Awful as that busy work was, it was sort of something to do. So with even all of that lost, it's like losing a job. And if you've ever lost a job or retired, you know that some of your identity goes with it and that's not easy. Growth is uncomfortable. And because we try to avoid discomfort, we may avoid growth and remain locked into bad jobs, bad relationships, bad family situations, bad situations of all kinds, because the devil we know and the fear of the unknown, and all that stuff, it doesn't mean we don't want to grow, but we also don't want to be uncomfortable. Trying to reshape our identities post-narcissist can feel really destabilizing. And it's also about finding new things to do, finding yourself. All of this is a central aspect of healing, and it's also one of the hardest. There's no quick pathway on this. Initially, you may find that rumination keeps you stuck in the identity you held in the narcissistic relationship, and that takes time to evaporate. Talk about it. Process it. Feel the feelings. Don't just distract, but feel them. Slowly start developing new aspects of yourself. You need to move slowly in the post-narcissism landscape because you are learning a new version of yourself. When you aren't invalidated and you are aware that you aren't invalidated, you may be more likely to take more chances, to be a little proud of something you did, to talk to someone new. It takes a minute. Sometimes it can even take years to get there. But having people around you that can point out to you the new things happening and then receiving praise for good things you've done, people who are showing interest in what you have to say, who are not stealing in reality, the more of that happening means you start to trust yourself more too. But this initial sense of who am I, like what am I about, kind of a loss of identity is a very normal part of the initial grief and of the healing process. Don't let it psych you out. Getting to know yourself is a getting acquainted process with someone new. Figure out what you want, what you like, above all, what you need. You may find out that you actually like to go to bed early or you like to eat dinner at four or recognize that it takes you a minute to warm up at a party or that you want to avoid violent movies or stay in on a Saturday night just basically gave you the Dr. Romani handbook there. But all of those patterns may have been so shamed that you started to believe that they weren't true of you or you tried to negate things that were true of you to become what the narcissistic people in your world wanted and needed for themselves. Healing means it's time to be you. That is the type of part of healing that is much harder to do if you stay in a narcissistic relationships. But please try to find safe spaces where you can be you. And in fact, you may then recognize that your safest relationships are the ones where you can be you and allow your true self to shine. For those of you interested in more content on healing, please check out the video notes. You can get more information on my healing program. But rec remember that we are so shaped by the narcissist that seeing ourselves without them seems like it's going to be a walk in the park. But it actually, it's actually a little bit hard because now we're all of a sudden we're like, wait a minute, I thought I was the short one around here. You start to realize that their context, the only way that works was you devaluing yourself, finding that true, that true depth of you, that courageous, serene, good you that was always there. That unearthing happens when you're no longer having the sun blocked by the shadow of a narcissistic relationship. Thanks again.